for one way or the other occasion and one time. But God is always faithful. When we say we got faith, it don't take much for us to, you know, to lose our faith. But if you just thank God to have you know, we, we are all away from the faith that we say we have. So God, Solomon Lee, he, he asked God to help him in many situations and them things. He's not on the prayer for the temple because now he built the temple as we go learn today. You know, he know God was in the presence of them because we, had, we didn't like that. He came in through a cloud and did things. So we're going to understand that God is not only in the temple, God is everywhere. He's all over the place and did things. So you don't have to wait till you get to the temple in order to pray. You can pray, you know, anywhere you go, wherever you're at. So Solomon is acknowledging the power that God had back then. He acknowledged the power that God got today and did things. So this, this is what we're going to be dealing with today, the faith of the Solomon. And, and what Solomon's doing now, when Solomon's praying, you know, he's praying in front of the congregation. He, 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 he's being a good leader, and he's hoping that the congregation catch on and he can do the same thing as well as what he was doing and whatnot. So, you know, this is the of him praying, and we're going to learn the posture that he took when he was praying and whatnot and different things. So we're going to get out to the lesson and see where we're at, which our Solomon's going to continue to pray for the people and himself as well and praying to God for all the good things that he has done and the good things that he know he will do because now he said a bright future and that's what all of us are looking for a bright future not only here but the bright the brighter future you're gonna have when Jesus come back to get you and, and we just sing the same the song to let Jesus lead you. So now that's gonna be the brighter future you're gonna be able to have when you get to make it to heaven. No other bright future than that because you know, hey, God's gonna be there in his presence with having a little so you won't have no lights and nothing like that. So how bright can you get without having to flip on a switch when you got the goodness of God in your presence? So we're gonna get started this morning. I think it called for verse 22 through 30. Uh, man. 22, 22, 24. And Solomon stood before the altar. Of the Lord in the presence of all the congregation of Israel and spread forth his hand toward him. And he says, Lord God of Israel, there is no God like thee in heaven above or on earth in thee who keep his covenant and mercy with thy servant that walk before thee with all their all, who has kept with thy servant David, my father, that thou promised him and that thou spake him. Also with thy mouth and have fulfilled it with thy hand as it is this day. Uh, we want to thank you. And in the first point you said, they said to you how Solomon stood at the altar and praying to God and the presence of the congregation. But now, if you go on and read the story, you know, they built a safe thing or Solomon to get out on a platform and different things. You know, just so he can pray in front of the people and all. And the scripture tells us you kneel or you can stand or whatever position you're assuming. But you know, you got to be genuine when we are praying. That's what Solomon is, is doing. He's genuine. He recognizes that God has the authority. You know, that's where you're from, that there's no other God, you know, compared to the one that it was uh, watching. Because back in the old days, they had a lot of God and whatnot. You know, it's different things. You know, God, people made God out of everything. But he just let you know that the people that congregate in that name were one true and living God. And that's God himself. The one that did the thing for my dad back then. And the, and the one that going to do the things for us through our prayer and supplication and all this stuff. So Solomon's not on the prayer. And Solomon praying for a whole lot of different things. He praying for crime, drought, you know, the enemy attack, the sin, and foreigners, and famine, and all this stuff, you know, and different things. Wars. Solomon, he was putting it all out there. You know, he was thanking God for the things that he had to do. Because, you know, God wasn't going to deliver them when he first went to the promise. He fought the war for them. The people were just there, but God was the one that done the fight. So Solomon praying to the congregation. Like I said, when you're praying in front of your congregation like that, it should make the congregation want to turn around and do the same thing because you know you got a good lady and them things. And by him being a king, he humbled himself down to do this and them things. And a lot of people don't want to submit themselves to a higher authority you know, and whatnot. I think I'm higher than everything else, so I ain't going to submit myself to nobody else because I think I got it going on. But God is the one we need to submit ourselves to because he is the one in charge. You know, he created everything, gone everything, and whatever case may be. But he gave us a chance to, you know, to, to do some of these things and use what he gave us to make a good living and whatever case. But it don't belong to us, it belongs to Jesus Christ. And you need to pray to him for giving us this opportunity. So 
but this is what Solomon is asking him. And, and Solomon is continuing to ask the Lord, you know, uh, to be in their presence and for their, their protection and whatnot, because, like I said, then he goes on to tell them about you, there ain't no other God like me in heaven above us, you know, uh, up beneath. So it's letting you know that the God, that some of the gods they had, could not do that for them. Only God is the one that can do something for you when you get in need. You get out and pray that you know, all you want to is still might cave in on you when you sit down in and whatnot. But you pray to God, God is faithful. And that's what we are talking about here. He is faithful, God, and make a promise to go back on you. So, you know, and come back. So I confess everything, you know, everything that he had through God, you know, whatever he achieved, he gave God to pray for us. So that's why he's praying to the congregation. And he went on to tell him now, you know, Verse 24 said that, who had kept that servant David, my father. You know, whatever he promised David, God fulfilled it. He did not tell David nothing that he wasn't going to do that do it. Even though David had problems, but he still stood by his word. Even though we have problems, God still stick by his word. We don't stick by our own word, but we stick by God's word if you believe in God's faith. So this is what Solomon let us know today and them things to pray. And this is the only way we're going to be able to connect with God when you get out on your knees and pray. But you got to pray with a sincere heart and realize God is God. And they'll think that there's no other God better than He is. You know, they what not. It don't make no difference how much money you got in your bank account, what kind of car you drive. Don't make that be your God. Because it is not going to talk back to you. The only way your car is going to talk back to you when you had to take it to the shop to get it fixed. And you will have to come out of your pocket and spend some money. You're going to say, I need something else. You know, you get it fixed. Car ain't talking about the people that serve this Bible who want talking to you and them things. So <laughs> let God be the head of your life and be choosing God and walking with God like David did, like Solomon did. Then let, let God do it for you. And this is what prayer is all about. You know, Solomon stayed in constant prayer and he was encouraging, you know, and by him being a king and the things that he was doing, he was encouraging people to do the same thing. Pray and whatnot. You know, and this time, you know, we get into a situation, it's good for other people to pray for you, but you gotta learn how to pray for yourself as well. You know, and I can't, you know, I can't save you. I can recommend you to the one that can save you. So you need to pray to God, you know, if you want to be saved, and serious about what you want to do. And at this time, so I was serious about you know, the thing that he wanted to do, he was serious about the position that God had put him in, because God didn't have to do it. But he did it anyway. So I don't know, you know, he was he was well alive, you know, but God gave it to him. So he could be, you know, be in this temple and be the next one in line. Oh, God made that promise. Guess what? He stuck to it. And Solomon is giving him the praise that, you know, he, he, uh, uh, God deserved. Anytime something goes wrong in your life, you get out to God and pray. Praise God. And you realize that man will give up on you quickly. They'll tell you quickly that ain't nothing there like to do. Even though there might be something else they can do. But they'll tell you quickly that ain't nothing there like to do. But God ain't like that. God would, God would stick to you for the just and the unjust. So let's not think that because we come to church with it, we got to seek a little of your true belief. Stop wavering in your belief. You just believe the day they find that you gave up and everything and whatnot. God is not like that. If God was like that, we'd be really in bad shape. And, and, and so we need to thank God and, and them things. So uh, this is what Solomon is telling us about, you know, when he's praying to us. God and reminding and letting people know that what he had to did and whatnot because of kindness and all to his servant David. And he, as you can see now, he called David a servant, he a servant, and all us servants. That's what we supposed to be, servant of God. You, you, we might get us some things that seem like a difficult and whatnot, but you know, God's got a way out for us. Just don't give up. When you give up, then you know, you're giving in. That means you don't trust God. Like you say you do, your actions. It's what you know, it's, it's that's what God is looking for. You ask is what's coming out of your heart. Our mouth can say anything. But you got to follow through with action. That's what Solomon was doing. He followed through with God. He, you know, he realized God never failed. He didn't fail his dad, he ain't gonna fail him as long as you stay connected. And that's what we're gonna have to do, people. We're gonna have to stay connected. And only when you stay connected, we got to be faithful to the things that we do. And Solomon was celebrating this, this place and you know, so I was thanking God for putting him on the throne. He was thanking God for David. You know, he was thanking God for the thing that God said would happen, and God didn't go back on his word. So he was just giving God all the praise and all that he needed to have. And he knew God was going to be the one that 
and power and complete any kind of pain, put a bone here. God put a pair of bones we leave you may be complete. Without any problem. On the way you're going to complete, you're going to give up and say, I just quit. Or I get too hard. Ain't nothing too hard for God. And different things. So this is what we got going on in these now. First it is, we know that you keep God. Thank you, God, for the thing that he promised in one life. And that's the same thing we should do. God said he shall never leave us alone, so we should be thanking God for saying that. And he won't. But you got to stick with it. You got to let him know you, you know you're one of his children. And they that he will not leave you alone. God look out for the one that love him. Because, you know, that's why they came down, because of his love. The, the well amongst us. He didn't have to do it, but he did it anyway. The Israelites failed. They was the one that spoke in an example, showing the people that the goodness by God. They fell in so many ways, so that's why Jesus Christ had to come. They were chosen people to go out and spread the word and, and tell them about God. You know, they had opportunity after opportunity. They start off good and wind up doing bad. Start off good, wind up doing bad. Start off good and wind up doing bad. As long as they were doing good, they didn't have no complaint. But when it comes to punishment time, you go to crime. You don't want to accept your punishment. You want somebody else to receive it. But if, you know, if, you, if it's, it's on your back, if it, it's on everybody's back, you know, whatever you do, you read what you sow. So don't sow it. If it's bad, don't sow it. You're going to have to work by the reason. Keep container it. It's so good that exactly what you're going to get. And don't worry about what the people say. You focus on Jesus Christ. Yes, sir.
But he's bowed down. And that's what he wanted. He's showing a good example of what the congregation should do. And now he's praying, and he's the king. What you think he should do? Pray to God. And wait on his answer. And then the answer he did be given you, it might not be the way you got it mapped out, but he gives you the right direction to go. You might stop, stop, back up two steps, go around, but you know, it's God giving you that direction. You cannot insert ourselves in, in, in the place that where God is. You ask God for help, and then you, when you get down, well, wait a minute. Uh, what you asking for? You asking for the truth, so now you're telling me the truth, but now you want to negotiate the truth with God. That's our mindset. So, no other point to come in. That's what we're talking about praying. That's how I'm start off praying. Yes, sir. I'm talking about this, the, the, uh, verse 23 is really like what he gets me when he say, he said, well, God who keeping covenant and mercy. Mm -hmm. Then he said, well, thy servant that walk before thee with all thy heart, all mm -hmm. thy heart, all thy heart. Mm -hmm. You know, and that like really the way, mostly like, you know, highlighted to me, you know, he say, and mercy, you know, but you, you got to walk forward with all your heart, you know, you got to be that's, like that's, a, that's, that's, that's it, he's talking about like, when he's talking about that, uh, like, you know, the servant, he's talking about like people like Moses, Joshua, all them other people, that, you know, God gave them a command, they did, according to what God told them, and that's why he sat them that night, he worked with him, and see, God is full of mercy, that's all way you go get mercy from Jesus Christ, and how much all men. You ask me for much, I might I got to debate over I give you nothing, man. But God will always make it to you because you ask him. And he knows you need it. I might know you need it, he won't give it to you because the type of person I am. But he said, you know, that's what God saw him and thank God for his mercy and his grace. And only God, you know, that God got that kind of, you know, that's the kind of love God got. It don't, that love don't never change. And he keep his promise. He kept his covenant. Well, God promised him. Those other leaders said exactly what he did for them. Yes, they got off court. Yes, I get off court. But you know, you got to remember what God said. Get back, get back in line. He give you room, get back in line. Don't tell them you get back in line right here because we want to put you on the word line here. That's why we're looking for a lot of preaching. That was a lesson to tell them. So that's what we're going to have to do. Don't put, don't put a comment at that. If that boy in your head tells you to do something right, stop for a minute and, and pay attention to it. Point intended. Cross the railroad, cry the lights on. If you automatically gonna stop by the black tip of the train coming. If you didn't want to stop, you're gonna run out there and we're gonna have the train gonna run over. It's all I can keep. You can't be seen. Hey, I'm talking about be seen to you, right? Okay, you kind of said it. Now you know though why why that really stick out to me because like I had a situation like and I, I had an accident mm -hmm. and I wasn't hurting like you know like for real until late on that day mm -hmm. when I went I went to my sister's house and a dude over there I just had a situation with like early like years before and it like my leg went to hurting so so bad. And so, like, it, like, cause, I mean, I felt like if my leg wasn't hurt, you mm -hmm. see what I'm saying? Right. That's what you feel. That's what, and, but the Lord know my feeling, too. That's why my leg was hurt. And, and, I, and I seen that. It really, like, and then, like, the next day, like, the day it don't hurt. And then, like, when I left there, it didn't hurt. I was like, Lord, have mercy. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Yes. Yes. Amen. Yes. That was some of his mercy. Yes. And that was some of his grace yeah. that he had mm -hmm. about. You know what? And he had to. Cause I couldn't even walk. The, I, my, and when I seen him, I wanted to charge him. Right. But I couldn't walk. Right. I couldn't walk. You know, God wake him instead of Yes, sir. Listen. Yeah. You know what he talking? Don't try to man hammer him. Yes, sir. You got to listen. <laughs> huh? Man, I have anything, but now you can't man, I have God. Yes. You got too much power. Yes. Yeah. Too much. Yeah. Huh? Put me on the hold. <laughs> <laughs>
Okay. I'll tell you what, you won't even walk. You're going to charge somebody. Yeah, you lay it down, tell your back. Mm -hmm. Like you're moving. Yeah, you hear me? That's what you do. Mm -hmm. That's the kind of way you do it. You know, just make it and see the thing about it. He saw something in That's why you know, that's why God sees something in the body. So that's why you give us a chance. To do the right thing. Never too late. Until you make it that way. When he give you that chance, you don't want to give you that chance, he'll tell you to the rest of your mind to go ahead on. Mm -hmm. You want to be a fool, you go and be one. Mm -hmm. I'm out of talk. You know, the question coming. But we're going to move right along then. Verse 25 through. Ooh. I don't have a book. 25. Just 25? Yes, sir. Okay, then. I'm going to get to one thing that. Yeah, go on, read them all. Just read them all. Therefore, now, Lord God of Israel, keep with thy servant David, my father, that thou promises to him, saying, They shall not fail thee, a man in my sight to sit on the throne of Israel so that thy children take heed to their way that they walk before me as thou hast walked before me and now O God of Israel let thy word I pray thee be verified was thou speaking unto thy servant David my father but O God in thee dwell on the earth behold the heaven and heaven of heavens cannot contain thee, which, which, which much less this house that I, I have built. Yet have thy respect unto the prayer of thy servant and to his supplication, O Lord my God, to hearken unto the cry and to the prayer, which thy servant prayed before thee to, today that thine eyes may be open towards his light, towards his house, night and day, even toward the place of which thou hast said, My name shall be there, that, that thou mayest hearken unto the prayer which thy servant shall make toward this place. Thank you, thank you, brother. You know, well, we just go to third, that's fine. Okay. We, we get a little too late. Uh, and in and, and, and verse 25, we're talking about. Oh, oh, you need to do one more? One more? Yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah. And hearken thou to the supplication of thy servant and of thy people Israel, when they shall pray, to, when they shall pray toward this place, and hear thou in heaven thy dwelling place, and when thou hearest, forgive. Thank you, brother. And see, verse 25 says, you know, now, in order to, you know, you got to follow what God has put out there for you to do it in, in order to, uh, you know, the inheritance, like Solomon was talking about, you know, you got to, you can't be failing God and expect you to put it on top of on, on, on a pedestal, or whatever. You got to work according to what God's will is and, and word is. That's what he's saying, you know, you follow along, but you got to do right in other words. You got to heed to the way, of, you know, his, his dad did when, I, when he was going through things, but he still followed Jesus Christ. And then what we're going to have to do, we're going to have to follow Jesus Christ in order to get that in there and be put in that position and different things. If you don't follow Jesus, then you're going to lose out. <clears throat> and, 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 and he goes on to tell us that, you know, that the word that God spoke to his servant David and different things, it was coming from God. So it was coming from God uh, that let us know that, you know, whatever God spoke was going to be true. And, and God the one who was spoken that Solomon when he put on the throne. They were saying one of David's sons was going to be put up there and whatnot. So he chose something to do this. And we got to remember, too, you know, he goes on to tell us about the dwelling place. You know, the heaven and the earth cannot contain thee. You know, we must remember that, you know, God can never be contained in our buildings, or, you know, our beautiful setting. He is far greater than any building. So, you know, you can't contain God in that tabernacle, when, even though his presence was there through the car. But, God is all over, and we must focus on the praises, you know, of God, the giving to God for being the God that He is, uh, and doing our worship. You know, and that's what He was saying. You know, now 
Yeah, we could, we could, uh, could be contained in chapter. He even said the heaven of the heaven, so that's just how big God is. He's bigger than ever. He's bigger than, you know, whatever. He's bigger than any creation that, uh, anything that he created, God is bigger. And can't no creation that, no creature that he created can contain God. And they were you remember, uh, a lot of the back in when Moses was born to the mouth, the people didn't want to hear God more. They said they didn't want to begin to speak. They cried out, oh, I'd rather really listen to you, Moses. Oh, they was power. They realized how power was. They cried, you know, cry to God here. Yeah. And he said, oh, my God, you know, hearken to, to the cry, to the prayer. You know, and it wasn't like so. What he was doing with uh, the office servant, you know, when you cry to Jesus Christ, Jesus Christ, he's your prayer. But you got, we need to be sincere about it. And, and Solomon was confessing that even though the Lord had chosen to dwell amongst his people on a cloud in the temple, he cannot be contained. You know, in them things. But God is willing to live in the hearts of those who love me. The spirit can contain it, but your heart can. He can get in that dirty heart and clean it up. And them things. He, you know, we come up in this building, but we don't want to do the cleaning to the building. But God clean us up by the word. And if you don't, if you don't let the word get in the clean you up, you're going to continue to be dirty. All your life, and if you continue to be dirty, now you're not going to enter into the kingdom of God. So if you're dirty, and you know, we worry about all this worldly stuff, or worldly government, but my thing is, you never be too bad to the, the, the government that Jesus Christ going to bring back. Get in line for that. Yes, sir. That way you're going to start, that way you're going to receive them crowns and all this stuff. You know, we, we have to go along with this stuff that laid out that they, you know, whatever the government says, but they don't think about that. We are preparing myself for the kingdom come. And when the kingdom comes, you're going to have to be right in order to get in there. Or God going to have his law. And he, that's why he's going to uh, refurbish everything, come out and tell him, you know, he was talking about supplication. You know, and, you know, humble yourself when you're praying. And then you cry to God, and God answers your prayer and whatnot. But, you know, just to see that you say one is going to have to make when we pray, you know, in a difficult situation, you know. And, 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 and when you have a different situation, a difficult decision, you know, you pray to God that everything will fall into perspective for you. Whatever the situation may be. And, and you know, and, and the right action of follow. Jesus Christ do not fail, you know, and whatnot. And, you know, and, and, and the question for me today is, have you ever felt far from God, separated by the feeling of failure, of personal problems, and all that stuff? And the Psalms let us know that, you know, the fact that God stands, you know, to hear our prayer and to forgive the, our, our sin and restore us back to a relationship with Him. God hears us when we pour out our needs and problems to Him. He hears your prayer, but you we need to be sincere. Be humble when you're praying. That's what you're talking about supplication and all. You gotta be humble. Because God knows when you're humble. He knows when you're playing around and trying to judge him around. But let's you know, let's not fool ourselves. Let's be honest about what we do. And then what Solomon was doing, Solomon was being honest to God when he was praying. You know, you know, let God know how much how he felt about the thing that he's done for his day and all the rest of them. He cried out. He was crying out not only for him, but the, Congregation as well, you know, that what, for God to continue to lead them in difficult times. For the future. Yeah, if you know that, you know, he wouldn't worry about you know, all that other stuff at the time. He thank God for the thing that he had did, but he wouldn't do well in the past. He said the future. That's what we're living for, the future. Don't let your past hold you hostage from being looking to that bright future. When you know better, you need to do better. Don't let nobody come in between you and God if you want to go to hell. The simple stuff can get you off track. Come on. Let me say so. Say this also for you on that subject if you need. Don't let your sin get you so far that you have a God for all men. I I'm so ashamed to it that I don't think I need that. I don't feel like I should. Where it comes at, we are not. But the thing is, you get to get on in that and start forgiving. Don't don't worry about what folks say. God is not like like me. I ain't gonna be man. Listen, either. God ain't gonna be like that. You come forward, He will get you. But He 
need that commitment. If I did it wrong, I went wrong, and I need to get myself, let that boldness get out of the way, come up and ask God for forgiveness. Because a lot of people have a little sense of devil talk. No, you're wrong. Come forward. Ask God. Ask Him. Ask Him for forgiveness. Ask Him to have mercy. Mm -hmm. But you better, you better love You better be sincere about what you Right, sincere. You know. And constantly pray. Constantly. constantly pray. You just don't pray. So, well, Lord, I prayed last week. Mm -hmm. You understand what I'm saying? I thought that, you know, you got to be constantly praying. All the time. That's when God hears your prayer. He will answer your prayer. And on His time. When he answers, you know, that's the way it goes and whatnot. So we just got to be so uh, minded of that and keep that in mind. This is what Solomon was telling us about when we pray and, and different things. And he was telling you, you know, keep your, uh, you know, day and night. You know, God do watch you over you day and night. God don't sleep. He got to see about you any time. You go to him any time. He ain't going to put you on the hold. He ain't going to hear you, you know, he ain't going to knock and won't let you in. He ain't gonna peek through the pee hole and say, oh, I don't want to see him. I don't want him. None of that. And we all owe God, but you know, he, he, he got time, he, he take our time for us and whatnot. So that's what we're gonna have to do. We're gonna have to take our time to hear the praise. We got to trust him when we pray in John. And he asked. Constant pray. And he asked. And when you're praying for your kids, you got to pray for them all the time. Just don't pray one time and quit. I'll put a span in between. Keep them in mind. Be, and be humble. If you want God to respond, he will. Just sit and wait. Be patient. Come on. Good morning. Come on. Well, I just wanted to say that's true about um, when you, I mean, well, when you say can't nobody come between you and don't let nobody come between you and God, that's when the humbleness becomes. Like sometimes a person can be dead to you because you know that you can't let them get between you and God. Like when I say dead, I mean mentally, like you can't even conversate with them because you feel like if you conversate with them, you're going to go out the ordinance of God. Mm -hmm. So therefore, it's not like you're not praying for the person, but you're just letting the person be. You know, like that's just like at work. I come upon a lot of situations, I have to handle myself. But I can't get led out of the spirit of God because I know the type of people that I'm dealing with. Everybody in my workplace is not a Christian. Okay, amen. All so I have to deal with all kind of spirits and all kind of stuff coming against me in the workplace. And they be like, well, T, why you so quiet? I can't let my, I can't let the devil get in me just because it's in you. That's right. You know, so that's why you have to humble yourself and be quiet and just... Don't say nothing at all if you feel like yourself can be led out the will of God. Because you know yourself. Right. As well as God know you. Right. So you know, that's why don't let them. If you see it back going to hell, but there's a lot of stuff in there that can intercede and keep us from going. A lot of stuff we might do, don't yet tell God to give. You know what I'm saying? And keep going like he says, it's okay. You know, sometimes I thank God, I check myself along. You know, he said, I, I, you know, if I keep. Think it wrong and think it wrong. I'm gonna build up and I'm gonna continue to think wrong and think it I'm going to heaven and I'm gonna think my way to heaven. Yeah, you be walking around here with your chest heavy. You know. feel like you got a book bag on your back trying to block stuff, you know? So you're a good stay in the will of God. But in order to receive forgiveness from God, you gotta ask for it. And he'll give it to you. Let's be real. No other questions or comments, we're gonna go on and close it out then. For the last Two verses. Thank you, too. That God eyes may be open to the supplication of the prison and to the supplication of the people who do function unto them in all that they call unto thee. For thou didst separate them from the wrong of all the people of the earth to thine.
what he's praying for the people that wear and them things. He's humbly praying for them. And you know, God's going to you know, keep his eye on the one that, you know, like I said, the one that loves Jesus Christ. You know, he, he got, you know, he got special things for you. Or if you say you love him, contain him love him. Don't love Jesus then as far as love when you see him because you don't know, get some of the stuff you want. You just contain him love him because he didn't give up. Hold up when he said he loved you, he did. He came down here in the well in us. If you allow the Holy Spirit, he's under heaven back down in the well in his old messed up temple I got, you know what I'm saying? And, and different things. Try to straighten me out. Didn't have to do that, but he did. So you know, that's what he's praying for. He, he was letting know the request that he was making amongst all the people. He was making requests for you know for God to be faithful, continue to be faithful. But we got it, we got a job to do too. You know, as well. We gotta to continue to be faithful in God as well. And pray to God as well for ourselves and others. You know, to be successful in this life and successful in the next one to come. So let's just keep in mind that this uh, the thing that uh, Solomon's doing is he's praying for, you know, everything and God after your prayer, people. You gotta communicate with it. Wrong folks, children, or whatever the case may be, you can go to them in prayer. Whatever situation you might be facing in school or whatever, whatever the case may be, talk to God about it and I guarantee you'll leave job. But if you don't want to talk to him about it, you want to continue to do the thing that you, you know you should be doing. There's a way out. And don't worry about what your friends say. Yeah. Yeah, all, you know, all the friends you live with, a true friend is a better, ain't no better friend to have than Jesus Christ. So a friend wouldn't even bring you down or try to bring you back down to the no way if you were a true friend. You ought to be on the same level. Different things, so you know, we spend too much time worrying about what friends say or what people say. People, you know, uh, people are gonna be people, mm. regardless of who they are, they're gonna be people. And if you ain't got Jesus Christ, you're gonna be over with people. And the one that can follow along with Jesus. So, my thing is, if you're on that narrow road, stay on. Don't let nobody snatch you off that road, and you don't know your way back. So if you don't know your way back, you know what? And when you're in a crowd, you're gonna stay lost. Ain't nobody gonna be able to find you because you may be in that crowd. You can raise your hand, but I don't see you. The back one can see you. And you raise your hand. In that crowd, you'll pull you out of it. And if the crowd don't want to follow you, bye bye. See you later, crowd. So one day, if you want to get there, you got to do it on your own. Pray to God for yourself and you just put the other that way. And you'll make it. Yeah, you can be able to hear them say, come on up here, my good and faithful. So, Thank you. And like that, I want you to thank you. I'm going to make you a good old man. Thank you. Set on the throne forever. We 
know that came down through Jesus. But the thing about this is that Solomon didn't see Jesus at that time. He started coming to Jesus. We got we get to see he had already came. We can get to look back at what he had went through for us. You know, I was, the scripture I remember saying that about Solomon is saying how great God is. He made that thing so clear. As great as God is, heaven cannot hold him. He, he's too large for heaven to hold him. And when we look out into space, you, you're looking into the second heaven is where you see the, the stars and the moon. And we look at it and it's so large. But yet it's still, God loves us so much that the God of the universe took up relevance inside of the believers. Yeah, y'all didn't get that, did He is so great, he's so powerful, he's so large that the heaven cannot contain him, but yet and still he allows himself to be contained within the heart of man. He gave every believer himself. God loved us so much that he gave us his own self. And when we look at, I've, as I've been studying the word of God, I've come to find out that when he made the earth, Everything that has happened on the earth, it happened somewhere someone else has already done something. The same place that Christ died on the cross is the same place that God sent Abraham, Abraham to sacrifice his son. It's amazing that how, see, we just pawn in a large game because as the ink run out of us, the time run out of us, the life run out of us, then God turned around and he chooses somebody from that generation to come to start off with what he left off with. That lets you know that God is greater than anything else. I, I heard uh, Deke was saying about, you know, one day that there's going to be a government to come, and that government is going to be greater than any government that we have. I'm going to ask you a question. We got an election coming up this year. And the election is that you're going to be politicians that running from your position. Well, guess what? We running for a position too. We running for a position in the government of Christ. Oh, I wish y'all would give me more. I mean, I, I wish you, I, I know you're here. I know this. But I wish you could get the understanding of what we're actually doing. What position would you like to hold in the government of Christ forever? I just want to make it. Good place to be. But I want to be trusted. That's a better place to be. He said, faithful over a few things will make you rule over many things. We got to learn how to be faithful over a few things. Solomon's dedication, prayer, is what's in my uh, Sunday school commentary. And the scripture says that a bright future. Don't you know there's a bright future? In us seeking God. There's a bright future in us following God. There's a bright future in us being obedient to God. And as I was thinking this morning, the Lord spoke to me. I had to write it down in the back of my, my commentary because it talks about faith and as I've been growing and learning in this thing. And, and, and lately, the Lord has been talking to us even about dead faith. You got faith, but it's dead. You'll find in the book of Romans, he said, if, if we believe in our heart and confess with our mind, Lord Jesus Christ, that he died for our sin, we're real again, he said, you shall be saved. That's faith in Christ. So sometimes a person can have faith that, Christ, that God died for our sin, but our faith may not be strong enough to take us through the trials and temptations of this world. We're saved, but we're weak in faith. And it only can grow through hearing the word of God. This is why he said we have to work out our own salvation. We do that by growing through the word of God. You see, it's one thing to accept Christ and believe that he done died for your sin. Oh yeah, that wipe everything clean, that's going to get you. But now it's another thing to learn how to be obedient to him and follow him. That you may be the example to the world. So do we want to get in or do we want to run for a position in the government of Christ? We want positions and titles and stuff and things down here. Why would we want that same thing for an eternity? 
Matter of fact, we still want the eternal things better than we want these physical things down here. Any questions come in? Yeah. 